Hello guys, you are welcome to Photographics Academy. Alright, so hope you are having a very nice time. So today we have something very interesting for you. We'll be learning how to use Mixer Brush tool to have an effective uh, frequency separation. So let's just call it the best frequency, the best Mixer Brush setting for frequency separation. These brush settings can work for you through all your images and the beautiful part is that we are going to be explaining what each of those settings does so that you can be able to decide the exact one that will work for you. All right, so let's get started. I'm going to run a frequency separation action quickly so that we wouldn't have to. Okay, so I'm going to be keeping my radius at somewhere around eight so that we can be able to see what we are doing. So let me zoom in a little and hope and make sure it's not too low. I think it's too low. So let's try something around 10. 10 should be a very good place for us to see what we are doing. Press OK. And every other thing is going to run. So I'm going to collapse this to avoid distractions. All right, so let's get straight to work. Go and look for our mixer brush tools from somewhere here. All right, so it was the last one I loaded. Now, when you get into your mixer brush tool, in case it's the first time you are getting into your mixer brush tool, and you notice that you are having color here it simply means that you are painting color over over your image see the way it's mixing colors over your image then to do to use it in frequency separation sorry we we'll have to stay on the low okay so to use it in the frequency separation you need to make it a wet brush like this a transparent brush rather not a wet brush a transparent brush but for the purposes of the class i'm going to be creating a blank layer or rather yeah a blank layer over here so we can be able to see what we are doing clearly okay so now let's get into the settings now when you say wet wet simply means is just look at it like a wet brush when you paint it over your object how much does it stretch that area and wet it out so let's say we are let's use our brush at maybe like 50 percent hardness Okay, so let's take the wet up. I want you to see something. So when I drag it like this, let me zoom it in. When I drag it like this, paint over right here. All right, so this is a good illustration. I'm deleting the blank layer. So I duplicated my low frequency. When I drag it over here, you're going to notice the way it's stretching. It's stretching my image. The way it's stretching my image, so I'll take it back. I should have just used one painting. Okay, so if I drag it, maybe let's take our flow up so we'll see exactly what we're doing. Nice, beautiful. So when I drag it up like this, you're going to notice the way it's stretching that area of my image. It simply shows that the wetness is high. Then let's take it as low as, let's say, 3%. Then drag it again. So see the way it's dragging that area so you need to do a lot of stroking to be able to get it out that is simply what wet does for you look at it as a wet brush when you take a wet brush and to, and take a color and run it over a paper you're going to notice the way it's going to draw the paint all over the paper because it's wet or even the wetness of the brush but if you take a dry brush and get a paint on it it's not going to go far that is simply what wet does for you so i'm going to delete this and duplicate it again for illustration purposes. Now let's get to load. Load simply means how much, how much of that color can you find in that particular area? So I'm using a blank layer to do this one because I'm going to be painting color. Okay, so load simply means how much of that color you need to see. See the way it's loading a lot of the greens, but when I take the load down, maybe to like two, you are going to notice a reduction. Sorry, our flow is still quite high. So all of these settings work hand in hand. So let's look at the effect. See the way. So let's just leave the flow at 100. Leave our, our load at 100. So we'll see the two extremes. So this is the load at 100. So let's drag it down. Maybe like once. Look at the load at 1. It doesn't so, show so much difference, but it affects the way the load of the color look at that look at this texture over here look at the way it's handling the texture look at the way this one is handling the texture over here look at the way it's handling the texture is making it's just making a significant difference in the how much of that color is blended into that texture 
how much of that color is blending blended into that texture you may not be pro you may not be able to properly see it because we we'll have a lot of frequency separation settings going on right here but if you are doing this on a totally blank layer you are going to notice so i would advise do it on a blank layer that, is, that doesn't have a frequency separation so that you are going to see the exact effect now let's go over to the other one called mix so for mixing we will not be needing mix for our frequency separation but if you want to know what it does it's just how much of the color that mixes how much of the color that mixes like this okay so let me do it on a blank layer maybe i should just off every other thing just off every other thing so if i paint this my color over here so let me keep my mix at 90 take my wet down take my load down sorry take my load down then leave my flow maybe like drop the wet a little so let's paint over like this and take the wet the mix zero percent and paint over here let's see the difference so it doesn't really really show so much of a difference but let's open up the frequency separation look at the effect look at the one who painted in the middle look at the one who painted over look at the texture difference look at the color intensity look like i said before try it on a very blank layer so that you can see the effect without the textures getting in in the way and all of that of course you already know what your flow does for you it determines the intensity of your brush now let's get into what we are doing now let's use it use all of this in a transparent layer in a transparent brush rather so we'll stay on the low frequency let's illustrate it again so our wetness at 100 here we'll run it over like this our wetness at zero or one somewhere quite low we'll run it over here look at the effect let me run it somewhere close so that i can see it very well look at the effect look at how intense the color is look at how faded the color is that is when you use wet in frequency separation let's duplicate so like i said we'll not be using mix so try to load up our load like this look at the intensity try to take it as low as possible maybe like one or something look at the intensity it's almost not there in the first stroke so you have to come back again to see it show up again so at the first stroke in one percent look at what it's giving let's take it up again at the first stroke in 69 percent look at what is given look at the difference in the intensity look at it over here look at the intense the difference in the intensity so that is what load does for you now what is the best setting for using mix if you put, for using mixer brush to the frequency separation so i would advise it's a personal opinion that is why i have to explain what each of them does so that you can decide what works for you so personally i like using my wet at somewhere around 15 percent I like using my load at somewhere around 30%. Of course, I'm skipping mix. I wouldn't want it. Then my flow somewhere around, uh, let's say, 30%. So I wouldn't have to do a lot of intensive painting. So I can see the effect of what I'm doing straight up. So let's go over our, over our image and try using it. Now, when you're using Mixer Brush tool in your frequency separation, make sure that you do not paint your highlight into your shadows because it's a very destructive process so what i normally do is that i close up my highlight my high frequency so i can just look at the colors one more thing i can tell you to do is that you can create a black and white adjustment layer over over the whole group like this so that you can crush the reds down a little so that all the highlights and shadows can stand out then after the whole stuff we'll just delete it now make sure that you are painting on your low frequency then zoom in on your image and start. So make sure that sample all layers is off. When you say sample all layers, it means you are sampling both from the black and white. Then start painting just one stroke over your uh, highlights and your shadows. Paint them separately, like I said. So I'm just going to do a quick one. So if you feel you are not getting enough intensity in what you are doing, you can as well decide to increase your flow. So but I'm using this, so I'm just painting over here. Of course, you can try to zoom out a little so you can be seeing what you are doing clearly. Like this. So you can follow the highlight, the flow of light in the image. You can follow the texture of the skin, the flow of the texture. I think that was too much. 
like this. So I'll paint right here inside here. Then I'll paint out of this place like this. Paint outside here. Make sure you are not painting the highlights together with the shadow. I'll paint outside here, then blend these two together. That was too much as well. I think my flow is quite high, so I'll drop it down a little. Like this. Blend this area. Blend this area together. Yeah, like that. Blend this area together. Blend this area together. Then let's go. Just carefully. Of course, you can turn off your black and white to see the effect of what you are doing. So let me turn all of this on as well. Okay, so this is before. This is after. Before, after. So I don't think I'll be needing the black and white anymore. Because I notice it's affecting my vision. So I will just I will just off my high frequency. Now it's beautiful. And blend these areas together like this. And we are good to go. So just do that to all every part of your image. So let me come over to this area. Like this. Got that edge. So make sure that your brush assumes the size of every single place you want to paint so you don't spoil things or get things messed up for yourself like that. So your hand will always be on the bracket, open and close key to make it bigger or smaller. Or if you know how to use your alternate to do that, it will be a very nice one. So for this tutorial, I'm using just my bracket keys. Like this. So take your time and get yours done. This is not a frequency separation video. I'm just showing you how to use it over your frequency separation. Thank you very much for watching this amazing video. Please do not forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and ring the bell to get notified every single time we drop a new video. Thank you very much. See you on our next video. Remember, take your time and study the video so that you know exactly the settings that works for your image of course the settings are always different in different images that is why we took our time and explained it thank you very much for watching see you on the next video